What's up? My name is Technova here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. So Overwatch 2 has just released and of course you can get it for completely free via the Battle.net store. I've got it over here and in this quick video I'll be showing you how to optimize the game for the absolute most FPS on your PC. That being said, this video isn't going to focus on Windows optimizations. Instead, in the description down below you'll find not only a Windows 10 but a Windows 11 and Nvidia optimization guides to get even more out of your PC besides optimizing the game itself. From this point, obviously close everything you don't need open on your PC, disable any overlays you're not currently using, and fire up the Overwatch 2 game so we can head into the in-game menu. As you can see, I'm currently running it in windowed mode, but that doesn't really mean too much, other than I just finished waiting in the 20,000 long player queue, so hopefully you get in a lot quicker than I did. Anyways, on the main menu here, I'll hit escape to pull up the main menu, then options, and on the video tab, we'll be starting with display mode at the very top. First of all, change display mode to full screen for the best FPS and the target display should be your best match or whatever monitor you want here. Best match should be your default main monitor, in my case the center one here. Then resolution should match your display, the same with the bracket and numbers next to it. These are the FPS that the game will run at at most. So this is sort of the FPS cap. You can see I can push my screen up to ultra wide, but I won't be doing that here as I'm recording in 16 by nine. Essentially, you'll wanna select your resolution of your monitor, no lower, or a supported resolution of your monitor so that things don't end up blurry. Then with the brackets next to it, you'll wanna push it as high as you're comfortable on your monitor, and of course, as high as is supported. For most people, there'll just be a cap of 60 FPS, when you have the choice between 50 and 60, simply choose 60 for more FPS if your screen supports it. I'll choose 2K 144Hz as that's what my monitor currently is. Then I'll hit Y to apply and after the screen adjusts, we can carry on optimizing settings here. So field of view, this is completely user preference. Usually I have this as high as possible to see as much as possible. No matter if this affects your FPS or not, this is completely your preference and you should push it as high or as low as you're comfortable and you're happy playing at. Don't worry about your FPS impact with your field of view. Aspect ratio should match your monitor. Usually it'll be 16 by nine, but if you're running a funky ultra wide or something like that, it may be 21 by nine or one of these other options. Dynamic render scale, you should have set to off. Otherwise your resolution will change while you're playing the game dynamically. If you have a medium to low end PC, you'll notice that your PC gets really blocky and terrible looking when you get into certain bits of combat or there's lots happening on your screen. It makes it difficult to know exactly what's going on. Render scale can be left at automatic if you have dynamic render scale turned off otherwise you can choose custom and lock it to 100% this way while you're playing the game it's not rendering at anything above your supported resolution and scaling it down and it's not rendering at anything below scaling it up making everything look rather blurry so usually I'd say set both render scale to custom and 100% and then frame rate to custom as well the frame rate number here is different to the resolution number, which we had previously. This is the maximum number of hertz supported by your screen in full screen. If you have this pushed higher than what your monitor supports, your monitor will simply be black. However, the maximum frame rate over here is how many FPS you can get in game. Usually the more you can get, the smoother the game will feel, even if you're getting FPS way above what your monitor supports. You'll especially know this if you're a Counter-Strike player, and you've tried playing on a locked 60 FPS versus a locked 300 FPS on a 60 Hertz display. Even though you're not seeing any more frames, it definitely feels a lot better. So usually you'd leave this at 300 or even higher unless you're recording and say your graphics card is maxing out, causing your stream to lag and OBS or whatever it is not to record properly. In that case, you can lower it to just below whatever FPS you're getting in game. That way you're leaving some graphics power available for other programs like recording software in the background. Then VSync, absolutely turn this off unless you're getting screen tearing. Then triple buffering, also off, and reduce buffering off as well. Then NVIDIA Reflex, you can choose enabled or enabled plus boost if you have an NVIDIA graphics card. You don't need RTX or anything fancy like that. Essentially, if your GPU bottlenecked, set it to enabled. And if your CPU bottlenecked, set it to enabled plus boost. If you're not too sure what you are, set this to enabled and forget about it, then move on. Then camera correction, contrast, and brightness are all user preference. The same goes for HDR at the very bottom. I've got HDR turned off in Windows, but my display does support HDR, so I would be able to turn this on and change the calibration right below it. These are all user preference, these last few settings, so set them as you see fit and apply your changes. 
Now we'll head across to the graphics quality tab on the far left and get to customizing each individual setting in our game. Starting with graphics quality, usually this will be set relative to the graphics card that you have. It sets it up automatically for you and choosing one of these presets to start with is a good idea. Usually you'll choose medium or high, but if you have a higher end graphics card, or you know exactly where you should be, you can select that option here. Note we'll be customizing all of these individually now. High quality upsampling here, I'm pretty sure it lowers the resolution of your game a tiny bit and upscales it a tiny bit to give you better performance, though I may be wrong with this. Image sharpening affects the AMD FSR option here, and if we turn off high quality upsampling, this option will go away completely. I'm pretty sure this has to do with render resolution, though it may be upscaling individual textures, in which case this may have almost no effect other than maybe an effect on VRAM while textures are loading in, for example. You can leave this at the default and move on. Then texture quality, you can set this to high comfortably on any medium or high-end graphics card, a 20, 70, 80, or definitely 90, you can set this to high and forget about it. This setting completely relies on how much VRAM you have available on your graphics card. If you know you have a much lower end graphics card, you can crank this down to medium or even low, lowering the quality of textures in game and getting you a bit more FPS. Texture quality uses more VRAM than anything, and having this pushed higher usually doesn't result in too much FPS loss, though it can have a huge impact on visual fidelity. Speaking of, texture filtering quality. This is anisotropic filtering and should have absolutely no effect on your FPS. You can leave this at 8 comfortably and move on, otherwise if you're using a much older generation graphics card or something like that where this does have a tangible effect, you can lower it here, though usually it has no effect at all. Local fog detail, of course this can make things a little bit easier to see through if you have this set higher up, though you can usually set this to low and forget about it. Then dynamic reflections, this isn't RTX or anything, you can set this to low if you'd like a small tactical advantage, but if you find yourself moving way faster than you'd expect and dynamic reflections don't exactly have any kind of an effect, you can set this to off to gain a bit more FPS. Usually screen space reflections don't have too much of a performance impact, as they're a really long done technology, unlike RCX for example. Shadow detail, you can set this to low comfortably, otherwise if you really hate the blocky textures, you can remove shadows entirely with off, or you can set them to medium to get smoother edges around shadows so they aren't so jagged. Model detail, this affects how much VRAM usage you have. Once again, you'll be setting this to medium or low if you have a lower end graphics card, otherwise leave this at high and forget about it. The effects detail is very situational. Whenever lots of things are happening, if you find that you're losing FPS, come back here and lower this down to low and see if it makes a difference in gameplay. Usually this will be very situational and you'll only notice a drop in FPS if this is pushed too high in certain situations more than others. Same goes for lighting quality. Usually lights don't move around too much unless they're coming from players. While it's not crazy lighting like RCX for example, Small bits of dynamic lighting could cause some major FPS drops, especially on older hardware. Usually you can leave this on medium and forget about it, otherwise if you're really struggling whenever things are moving around and casting light onto walls, you may want to lower this down to low for even better FPS. Anti-aliasing quality, usually I'd recommend turning this completely off, that way you don't have anything blurring your screen artificially for no reason. Though this can affect the smoothness of edges in game, you'll notice some jagged edges and if you really hate that sort of look, you can come back and set this to one of the options here. Just know that FXAA does blow your entire screen, unlike SMAA over here. Though, once again, that's a lot faster and these ones down here take a lot more processing power in order to get them looking good. Then refraction quality, this is the quality of light traveling through objects and translucent or transparent objects. You can leave this on low and forget about it, usually you won't notice too much of a difference here, but it can have a major FPS impact if you're seeing lots of transparent type glassy objects in the scene with light traveling through them. Screenshot quality, you can leave this at 1x resolution, unless you want to take much higher resolution screenshots for some reason and go through and edit them later. In which case you can push this to whenever you want, it will have absolutely no FPS impact on gameplay, it only causes your game to lag when you take a screenshot. Ambient occlusion, you can leave this on medium and forget about it, there should be a very minimal FPS impact with this option. Local reflections, leaving this on on, will affect how your player reflects in puddles and things like that. Usually you can leave this on without too much hesitation, though you can turn this off if you're scrambling back every last bit of FPS. Then damage effects, you can leave this on default, 
Otherwise, if you find that when you're taking damage or delivering damage, if things are looking way too crazy on your screen, you can set this down to low for a less jarring effect. I would expect this to have more of an impact on certain players' playstyles rather than FPS. Anyways, I'll apply my settings and move on to the Details tab in the far left. This is where we can see some information about our game. By default, everything is turned off except for Show Frame Rate, though you'll notice that while you're in game, you don't see frame rate at all. We need to set the Display Performance Stats to On in order to see the frame rate, which is turned on by default here. We can also turn on GPU Temperature, VRAM Usage, Network Latency, and Network Interpolation Delay if you like to debug your network and see what's causing issues there. I would recommend, at least while you're setting up and optimizing things for the first time, enabling the show VRAM usage over here and enabling the performance statistics overlay. That way, while you're playing the game, you can see exactly how much VRAM you have free and whether you're maxing it out. If you happen to be maxing out your VRAM, it will cause a huge drop in FPS, so make sure to go back and lower things like model quality and texture resolution in order to claw back some extra VRAM really quickly. As soon as it drops below the absolute maximum and you're not capping out your graphics card, you should notice that it has very little impact on what you push those settings to until your VRAM starts to max out. Anyways, with that comes the end of this very quick guide. There's not too much else to talk about here. These other tabs are all completely user preference, except for maybe the accessibility tab under general, where we can turn off things like camera shake, or at least reduce it, HUD shake, and reduce menu movement if you find that this would give you some kind of a competitive advantage. It'll definitely be very minimal, but if you'd like, you can reduce these just to make things a bit easier to see while you're spinning around in game. Anyways, that's really about it for this quick video. Thank you all for watching. My name is Technoba here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.